Good evening and welcome to the uh, August 26, 2021 Conservation Commission meeting. Where's the currently held at the um, municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternate means, increases public the, access, and we're required. Oh, hold, on. hold on a second. Excuse me. Uh, Meetings normally held at the municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternate okay. means, public access, uh, and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A, section 20. Um, if you're not speaking, I'd make a request that uh, people in attendance, uh, if your, your issue is not up, to please mute yourself, and uh, if you'd like to participate, uh, you know, uh, raise your hand or whatever, and then we'll recognize you because otherwise we'll end up talking over each other. Um, I'm now going to take attendance for the uh, commission. Tim Hilchey is present. Uh, Pete Law present. Ben Byrne present. And so we have a quorum, and um, we'll uh, first order of business is to. Uh, ask if everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the previous meeting, and if so, did you have any um, comments or corrections that you needed to make? Ben Byrne was absent, so I'll abstain. Uh, this is Pete Law. I did re review the the notes, and I think we're going to talk about a few things tonight. So I would make a motion that we accept the uh, meetings from the July 22nd, 2021 meeting um, as is. Okay, and I'll second. Um, there's no other discussion. And since Ben has already said he'll abstain, um, I will vote yes to approve the minutes as written. Tim Hilchey. Uh, Pete Law, aye. Okay. So the motion is two with one abstention, two four and one abstention. Thanks. All right, so um, we will move on. We don't have any mail that I'm aware of, so we'll just skip over that and uh, get into the new business. And the first thing that's um, on the agenda is the continuation of the RDA for um, Eagle Brook. And what I'm going to do um, is just call up the, the um, latest iteration of um, a new plan and screen share. Uh, so just give me a second. To get it into an appropriate size and Okay, now let me hit screen share. All right, are people able to see that? Uh, it's Pete Law, I got it. Okay, all right, so um, I see that uh, Wesley Smith from Eagle Brook is here. Um, Wesley, would you um, just Give us a quick overview of what you've uh, what's changed since we were speaking last at last meet, last uh, July's meeting. Yep, sure thing. Thanks, everyone. I especially thank you because I had I got to leave soccer practice early and I was a sweaty mess. So I uh, apologize if I'm a little flush here, but those uh, those girls had me running circles. Um, <clears throat> So basically what we wanted to do is just simplify this. If you recall, the, the last um, plan was to expand the footprint of the existing uh, field dimensions. And what that was going to do is after we uh, delineated the wetlands, we really, well, let me back up. I, I wanna just also say that we were kind of doing this all in real time, right? In an effort to save time for this project. So we were learning things really as, as, as you were learning things. And as we learned that the, um, 
that if we are going to expand the the field to actually get to a field um, dimension that we could play lacrosse games and football games on, we are going to significantly um, disturb uh, the the buffer zone and the wetlands. So as we were as as the last meeting went by, and I wanted to bring this back to um, some others at at Eagle Brook here, and we really it really isn't our ultimate goal is to have a field um, in this location where we could play games on. Really, the, the idea is just to be able to um, have practices and um, and use it so we could get out earlier in the spring when we when we get back from session or on rainy days, just have a field that we're not ruining our natural turf fields. So we decided to keep the uh, existing footprint and just work within um, the delineation and hopefully um, if we're keeping uh, the field within the existing boundaries of the clearing um, we won't disturb um, uh, any of the wetlands and and some other points to mention um, is of course we haven't um, done a run stormwater calcs yet um, as that would be the next step but um, the proposed stormwater is showing that we're going to basically maintain the existing outfall locations and pipes. So there will be no changes to existing stormwater discharge points. And the stormwater design will not um, exceed the, the current um, peak runoff flows. Um, so hopefully um, the simplification of this will um, allow us to remain within basically a, an RDA and not get pushed to an NOI um, in an effort to just move this forward in a as efficient as we can. And um, you know, who knows? We might even be able to get this going um, later this fall so that we could uh, have it for the spring. I think that's a I think that's a hope and a prayer at this point, but. Um, Either way, that's that's neither here nor there at this point. But the, the point was just to simplify the um, the work that we were doing and, and the disturbances. Does that does that make sense or? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Peter, Pete, what do you think about uh, the the general discussion of that that Wes just shared with us? Yeah, I mean that site did have a lot of um, a lot of vectors on it, at least three sides of, of wetland issues. Um, but if we're staying within the boundaries, Tim, there's I'm trying to think that I mean there'll be construction, so we may have some comments and oversight here on how that is handled, but I'm not sure we have what is your, what are your thoughts about staying within in the existing boundaries in and working from that point without, because we talked last time about getting a third party peer review um, because it was so close and overlapping some of the boundaries. Uh, what are your thoughts about continuing as an RDA? I'd have to look at the RDA to see what finding conclusion it would be. Um, your thoughts, Tim? Um, <clears throat> well, my feeling, two things. I think this is the right direction Mm -hmm. I think that Eagle Brook's thinking is correct, that um, there would have been a lot of difficulty trying to expand and work in the wetland resource areas. Um, I do agree that um, although this is a step forward and now we understand the concept that, that probably the, um, the calculations and a final plan that says what the peak, peak water runoff is going to be um, is something we're going to have to consider. But that, um, and then I think the final point that you raised is correct that uh, we'll probably have to <clears throat> have, and I'm sure Eagle Brook will be fine with this, a uh, good system of erosion controls um, because this, there's going to be a lot of soil removal, a lot of soil, uh, you know, material brought in so that the, the, the artificial turf. It's, an, it's a complicated little system, but um, 
as your engineer explained to us last time, Wes, um, wants the underneath, wants the uh, subsurf, substrate for the field is in place, there's gonna be a, an ability to hold water in place. Um, so I'm sure that the, the, the hydrology will probably work, but, uh, um, and I think we probably could stay within an RDA assuming that you're not uh, gonna be getting any larger. Um, as to when we would actually make a finding, that's the that's a question I I'm not 100 percent sure on, um, and it sounds like your your hope to start work is maybe slipping. Um, yeah, but yeah. Um, you may still want to do some work in the fall. Um, but I'm wondering if it would behoove us to continue this one more time until you have a, a more finished plan that just talks about the water engineering. Um, and then we could probably be in a position to make some informed decision. What's your thought, Pete? Yeah, I still think there's some issues here with stormwater movement where the um, construction material would be stored, how it would be monitored, how it would be erosion control, even on moving stuff within the, within the footprint. Um, erosion control items on I remember it, it's at least the three sides. Um, right. Yeah, I think we need some more of that final detail and maybe more. Uh, Wes, do you have a, you know, do we have, um, I don't want to say construction, uh, you know, project plans of uh, how much material, what type of material where it goes, how it's stored, uh, it, those types of things, yeah. No, we've we've been sort of inching along, uh, to yeah, be honest. Okay. Like we haven't we haven't you know, as we started getting that information last time, um, I, you know, I, honestly, to be honest, I was surprised at how much wetlands there there were. I thought I was going to be yeah. in a little bit more buffer. So, um, so that's when we kind of switched gears, and I kind of wanted to just get a sense to see if this is the right direction. No, knowing that that we're you know I, I'm. I'm, you know, 99% sure that, um, like, like Tim was saying, because we're going to be able to create a system to hold the water, the discharge is not going to, the runoff is going to stay, you know, it's not going to exceed what it is now. Um, and then the discharge points, we're actually going to use those existing discharge points because they're there already. So we wouldn't, again, so we don't have to disturb any of those uh, wetlands. So I guess what I wanted to do is just, one to be honest is just see if this was going to be enough to um or you know at least get the inclination that you know the rda is the way to go and versus an noi and you know if that is the route and in that in that, that's the generation of, uh the general direction that we're heading here you know i know that we're if we want to move forward with this anyways we're going to have to do stormwater calcs we're going to have to come up with construction documents that are going to show um, erosion control measures and, and you know, how, where we're going to store materials and all of that. So, um, you know, as we move forward that, that, you know, either way, we're going to have to have to head that direction. So, um, but understand, you know, again, it was more just, is, it, is this enough or honestly, if, even if I, uh, <clears throat> Even if you guys say, "Hey, we need a little bit more information, more information before we make a ruling," that's completely fine with us at this point. We're not gonna, we're 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 not shotgunning this project by any means at this point. So, Tim, do you have any thoughts? Ben, do you have any thoughts? Talks and stuff, and uh, and figure out procedures and whatnot for a for a proper plan, I guess. Okay, I I um I think that basically I I want to ask a question of the other two commissioners. Um, would it would it make sense for us um if we I I I agree that this is a direction that is a logical one for Eagle Brook to pursue, and um, I wondered if it would be logical for us to continue this RDA hearing to a date to be determined and let Eagle Brook come back to us with 
a more complete set of you know construction plans that addresses the things that uh, Pete brought up. Um, how much soil is going to be removed? Where is it going to be stored? Uh, you know the the basic construction. If you move forward with this, those things are things you're going to have to prepare anyway, Wes. So, um, and then once you feel comfortable with the pretty robust and finished basic plan, notify us and we can um, then set the continuation date. Is does that work for you, Pete? I think so, Tim, and that there, there's still, still some unknowns here. I think that you know the overall process is simpler now. Um, uh, Wes, it'd probably be you know a certain number of conditions on this. We just don't know what they would be, but it, you know, roach control and timing and, and so forth. But uh, you know, the two areas that I think I'd really want to see is just what the uh, hydraulic um, analysis is of stormwater, and that we're not increasing anything, um, and then what does it look like for um, the actual project uh, activities, uh, materials, how much, where it's stored, how, when it's moved in and where it's moved out um, so that we have a, you know, a better assessment on that. And until we get that, Tim, Ben, I'm not sure we can come up with all the uh, potential uh, contingencies on the RDA at this point. So I think a continuation at a time to be determined um, makes sense. Does that sound good to you, Ben? Yes, sir. Okay, well, um, then I'm going to make a motion that we um, continue the Eagle Brook uh, commu uh, 11 community County Road uh, RDA to a date to be determined uh, and ask Eagle Brook to come back to us, uh, notify us when they have a more complete um, construction plan so that we can uh, finish up deliberations on this. Do I have a second? Yeah, this be law. I'll second that motion. All right. Um, is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, I will uh, call the question. Uh, Pete Law. Uh, it's Pete Law, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Okay, um, so Wes, um, I think we're done for this evening on your project, um, and we look forward to uh, seeing a you know pretty close to finished plan and then in the future, and so we can uh, help wrap this up. Sounds good. No, I appreciate it, guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, have have a good evening. You too. Right. Good night. Thank you. Okay. All right. So the next thing on the uh, agenda is the RDA for 34 Graves Street. And I'm just gonna see if I have anything that I can call up um, and share with folks. All right, so um, I see Bill Luttrell is here. Are you gonna be speaking for this, Bill? Yes, um, I just unmuted myself. I, I, there should be a separate plan that you can bring up, I sent. It was- Yeah, I'm gonna try and see if it it's- wasn't a, it, wasn't a, it, wasn't a, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a part of this document, it was a separate attachment. Okay. It, if you don't have it, I have it on my desktop, so. So let's just go over the proposed work um, okay. and then I'll call up the other thing, so. Sure. Um, so the, um, what the Petersons want to do here is, is put in a 196 square foot shed. Um, we delineated the wetlands uh, early this summer and looked at the stream closely. It's not a perennial stream. It doesn't become a perennial stream until another few hundred yards downstream. And I did a stream stats on it that showed that the uh, watershed was under the half square mile that requires further investigation. So we pretty much cleared that issue up. 
Um, and then uh, we delineated the, the, the wetlands along the border of the brook that you all saw last week. By the way, let me apologize for missing last week's meeting. I did come, but I came an hour late. <laughs> I, uh, I put it in my book at 6.30 instead of 5.30. So um, that's on me. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, so the, um, the wetlands were de delineated. The, the brown that you see there is, is the actual site for it. We have erosion control in there, but we may not need it because the, the building is going to be positioned on four concrete blocks instead of sonotubes. It's coming from Lemoore's um, up Route 5 there. They'll, they'll bring it in on a wheeled trailer and um, position it directly onto the, um, on, onto the blocks. It's a pretty, this is a pretty simple proposal. So all the work is outside 50 feet. Um, and we've located it. Not supposed that, to be doing it yet. I don't know. Um, I, I, I wanted to locate the uh, everything outside of 50 feet for two reasons. One, at the beginning, if it was a perennial stream, then it's it, one of the um, exemptions in the law is that if it's a uh, more than 50 feet, a, sh a shed is allowed and doesn't require any further conditions other than the, the conditions we're meeting here relative to buffer zone. Um, and it's also a very good position for it relative to their use being close to the house um, and it fits, it fits in there nicely. So it's, it's, this is a very simple proposal, but we wanted to make sure that we were able to um, get the endorsement of the commission before it was anything proceeded. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Pete? Yeah, Bill, uh, this is Pete Law. Uh, thanks for the uh, clarification on uh, use of the concrete blocks versus sauna tube or putting in a, a, a slab or anything like that, because that was the only, when we looked at it, the only concern was if there was going to be any real construction there or not. Um, otherwise, uh, it was fairly straightforward. Tim, you were out there, your thoughts? Yeah. Um... So my question, there were a couple of things when we made our site visit, we noticed that uh, um, my thought was, if Lamore is bringing this in as a finished shed, how are you gonna bring it onto the property? Are you gonna come through here where my cursor is moving? Or are you gonna come through this driveway, which is next to the neighbors? In which case there's, or how are you gonna do it? Because there was also some, it looked like a trailer that was blocking access. And then there's a, stone wall here yep. that you're going to have to get over or around or behind. So yep. can you explain that part of the plan? They'll bring it around the east side. Um, it's relatively level until you hit that steep bank on the um, um, for the stream. And um, the, they'll back it into there and, and, and uh, slide it off on, onto the blocks. And so um, just so I'm, as we're looking at this picture, I assume everyone's seeing it. When, which, which side are you describing as the east side? Is it the? It's the side with the stream. So this side. So the, yeah, so the map's oriented north and south. You can see the arrow on yeah, the bottom. Down the here. Just wanted to make sure. So you're talking about backing it in and then coming around here. They may not have to back it in. I actually envisioned them driving it straight in and then backing the trailer up to the site. You're absolutely okay. correct that there's a stone wall there. We'd have to, it, that's the only way of getting it in there. Okay. Because, but the, the reason I mentioned that we're, it would be barred in on a wheeled trailer is that to, to indicate to the commission there would be no earth disturbance. You know, it would be, you know, it's a pretty dry site. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect anything to happen in delivering it or, or putting it in place. It's a pretty simple process. Okay. Um, I actually worked on one in, in um, I think, yeah, it was Leiden, and um, they, uh, they, it was a really tough site to get to. Lamore did the job, and I was amazed at how they got it in there with doing absolutely no damage. Um, they're pretty good at doing this. They've done many of them, and um, as far as I can tell, they're very conscientious. Okay, and as far as you know, there's no there's no trees or anything that are going to obstruct this process in this side. No. No. Ben, I know that you 
didn't have an opportunity to join us on the site visit, but do you have any thoughts? Uh, no, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm familiar with Lamar and how they get those things in and out and around and about, and uh, I don't have any, uh, any concerns. Okay. Pete, do you have any other thoughts? No, I think we can go ahead with it and maybe yeah, as before we get to the motion, you know, if for any reason there is um, a need to put in, you know, to disrupt any of the soil there, if you do switch your mind, there's a need for sauna tubes and or a slab and it's going to be, uh, you know, movement interruption of the soil lawn, then we, we would want um, corrosion, erosion control uh, around the, uh, the site area. Could may may I suggest that um, the commission, if if they if they do a negative termination, add a condition um, stating that, so that it's clear. I think that would be the way to go. Yeah. Yep, I think so too. Um, I'm just going to go back to the. Uh, Do you have the RDA the, there. Yeah. Okay. So. Basically, you're looking for a negative three determination that says that um, you're not going to disturb anything. Is that correct? Correct. Um, did you want to see anything else on this, Pete? Uh, is there a page you'd like me to scroll to? No, I, I was just verifying it's going to be a negative three on this one. OK. Um, so yes, uh, based on what Bill Latrell just said, do you, are you feel comfortable making a motion on this, Pete? Um, let me, uh, yeah, let's Pete Lodd and make a motion that we um, accept the RDA with a negative three determination um, with a condition that if it is deemed necessary that there's any interruption of soil or lawn um, for shed placement erosion controls will be put in place during that activity and the commission will be notified 48 hours in advance of, of said activity. Um, and I'd second that motion. Is there any further discussion among the commissioners? Uh, hearing none, then I will um, call the vote. Um, Pete Law. Uh, Pete Law, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. So that motion carries three to nothing. And um, do you have any other questions for us, Bill? Or um, no, no. Is, is Mr. Peterson with us too? Ruth's son? I'm hey, sorry. Are you, are you Ruth Law's son? Hey, I, I'm sorry. Oh, but, oh yeah. Yes, oh. I am, Bill. Yes, I thought I thought I recognized you. And then, of yes. course, your name. Your mom is like one of my favorite people on the planet. Oh, uh, good to know. I read your column in the Heath Journal from time to time, right? Yeah. Well, she she served on the Conservation Commission with me for like 20 years. So. Well, truth be known, I mean, she's what got me into the environmental field, which I've been working on my whole life. So right. it, uh, she scared me in the right direction. Absolutely <laughs> wonderful person. Good to know. I'll, I'll give her my her best to you. Your best to her. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, if uh, you have no, no other questions for us. Um, no, sir. All right. So uh, thank you for your attendance and uh, thank you for bringing this to us. Uh, we always appreciate it when people come, even if it's a simple plan like this, if it's, uh, it's, uh, it's much appreciated. So right. thank you and Mr. Peterson. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Now on to the next order of business. Um, which is um, an RDA for 20 South Main Street. Uh, Can you pull that one up? I, uh, I yeah, I'm just to gonna try and share the screen here. Try to remember that one. Oh, I remember this one, yeah, I got it, okay. So this one is, um, I think Peter Sadler is here, he's the builder and um, are, is the uh, the family that is is Maggie Mike Maggie or Mike Wood here? I, 
think it might be the owner talking, but it is on mute. Okay. Peter, you want to unmute yourself? Peter Sadler? How's it going, guys? Good. Um, is your client here with us tonight? I don't know. Good question. Mm -hmm. Let me throw him a text. Well, um, let's proceed. Uh, we, Pete and I were able to come out and see the site plan, uh, the, the site location. Um, if you could just basically um, give us a quick overview, overview for the for the audience um, and for the record. Uh, yeah, so basically um, I'm trying to do a family room addition and a little extension of the garage um, off the side of the house um, and part partly off the back of the house. Um, something to just kind of open everything up for them. You know, the, they're running out of space and they, they, they need the extra room. So as you can see there, um, we're 14 feet off the back of the house um, and then another 14 feet off the side of the house. Very flat yard, uh, you know, gentle slope down to that uh, stream in the back. But, you know, the uh, uh, yard is manicured basically right to within 10 feet of that stream. Um, you know, a lot of the houses are like that in that particular area. Um, so basically what I'm proposing is to do a, a gable facing the stream. Uh, so all the runoff from the roof would be going from side to side. Um, and it's pretty cut and dry. I think there's, you know, I don't, I, I, my main concern would be I would want to put in some um, silt fencing of whatever your choice or, you know, I, I was going to plan on doing silt fencing with a combination of uh, hay bales, straw bales, whatever it takes uh, right behind the site and really just move uh, laterally from side to side with all the work and not push any material or anything back towards that stream. Um, and really just try and keep it as, as simple and uh, clean as possible um, for my own sake without having to, you know, I don't want to have to clean up the yard at the end anyway. So, um, you know, uh, just just doing a nice clean job and keeping everything away from that stream for, for everybody involved. During our site visit, uh, I'm going to try to move my cursor in the ways there's a pool that's located in the backyard. And so you described the plan to put silt fencing sort of um, between the pool and the house and the area that you're gonna be disturbing. And um, if there's extra soil that needs to be removed from the site, uh, presumably you're gonna be taking it out to South Main Street. Absolutely, yep. And um, you know, it might even become a situation where we load it right into a dump trailer um, or a truck up by the driveway. And then that way it doesn't even have to be piled up. Um, if we, if we do pile anything, uh, temporarily, we can cover it, um, with a tarp and leave it off to the, uh, the left, uh, the right side there of the garage. Okay. You know, I, I mean, like I said, I don't want to be tracking in the backyard anymore, you know, than anybody wants me there. So, um, I, I would keep everything to the side into the front yard. Okay. Pete, I, uh, after your viewing of this, do you have any additional thoughts? No, we took it. We took the, uh, the view there. Um, yeah, I think, it, you know, the, the general uh, erosion control measures that we, we put in place here will probably do it, but uh, let's see if there's any other comments from anybody. Ben, I don't know if you were um, ever happened to drive by or if you're familiar with South Main Street. Um, I do agree with Mr. Sadler's description of it. It's a fairly flat and fairly, it's a, the neighborhood's been developed for a long time, so. Um, yep, yeah, I got it up on Google Maps. Um, I've been through there a few times. I don't know the house specifically, but I kind of know the area. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a uh, pretty standard, straightforward. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I don't really have any further thoughts about this. I would, uh, um, I would like to see, you know, obviously we're going to probably put a condition on it that uh, 20, uh, 48 hours before you start the actual construction work that we, um, we come to be able to look at the erosion controls and just make sure, make sure that the, you know, what you put in place, is it going to be adequate? Um, it sounds straightforward, but, um, maybe some combination of either the silt fencing and or, um, you know, um, wattles or, or hay bales, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that we, um, we want to be concerned about when, on this one, Pete? No, is any other comments from anybody else on this? Anybody in the audience? Okay, well, if there isn't, um, do you um, feel able to make a motion with conditions, Pete? I've been trying to uh, jot that down on the side here. All right. Um, I think there's a couple of things on the soap areas, uh, the removal of soils, trying to find the right wording to make sure the soils are stored um, within the control boundaries, I guess. Uh, And back to the RDA, Tim, there was two, two items checked off. I think uh, A was, and C. That was my bad. <laughs> I, I, I think I, I uh, You meant to be basically C is what you were. Yeah, exactly. So A is something that. I couldn't find my white out. <laughs> yeah. So A is. Um, whether or not it's in the wetlands protection at. Um, uh, which may or may not be, but what we really need is a negative seed. The plan is going to be is subject, okay. Then we, yeah, we, we have a double on this. Um, are we good with just the negative determination on the one or do we have to address A as well? Well, you know, um, I spoke with Mark Stenson about these things when occasionally when, the, when something comes in um, and um, the question that we can ask Peter is, does he want to remove the A and then we can, we can just not have to address that issue or we could uh, make a, positive determination that it is within the area, but then make a negative determination that it's not gonna affect. Um, so the simpler thing would probably be to just um, have Mr. Sadler ask us to re remove the, the A from consideration. Yeah, I, I think I think that's that was my initial thought. And I, I believe I did, um, uh, I think I did that as I, when I turned it in and then when I got a copy of it to send to Springfield or wherever I sent it, uh, I did white it out on that copy. Um, so yeah, because I didn't hear back from Mark on this uh, and, and he usually makes he usually makes comments when there is more than one box checked yeah. off. So, um, so I think then motion we'd be looking for is to do um, a negative three determination with um, several conditions that are pretty straightforward, but uh, yeah. you, got, okay. you got your thoughts in order, Pete? Yeah, I, so let me just make a motion here um, that we'd find a, a negative finding for um, 3C um, conditions that erosion controls of soap barriers a build combinations or appropriate materials be placed appropriately on the east side of the construction pro uh, project between uh, the construction and the stream. Second condition would be that all soils removed and stored on site would be held within the control barriers, the control boundaries. Third condition being that a 48 our notice will be given to the commission 
um, before construction begins so the commission can review um, the actual uh, implementation of the, of the barriers and road control at the project site. And, um, okay, um, do I have a second? Uh, ben Byrne, I'll second. Any further discussion? Um, hearing none, I will uh, ask for a vote. Um, Pete Law. Uh, Pete Law, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Um, so uh, we will basically just look forward to Peter Sadler getting in touch with us. Um, this paperwork probably will be ready tomorrow, um, but signatures might not be in place until Monday. Uh, but uh, just give us the 48 hours notice so we can stop by and just check on the erosion controls and make sure everything's in place and then we'll be good to go. That sounds great. And now we'll, uh, I'll let you know, we got a little bit of time before we can start anyway. So um, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get that all set and I will uh, be, in co be in contact with you about the erosion control. Excellent, thank you. All right, thanks guys, take care. Good night. Thank you too. Okay. Um, the next order of business is to amend a decision that we made at the previous meeting, which involved um, the treehouse um, brewing um, phase two of their uh, renovation work at the former Channing Beat uh, facility. Uh, turned out that um, I th I'm going to look in my email and just uh, think what we needed to do was um, issue a, de a negative two determination. But let me uh, let me find my email. Apologies for not having this in front of me, but. Uh, Okay, so um, Mark Stenson reviewed um, the uh, RDA request from Eagle Brook, and I mean not Eagle Brook, but uh, Treehouse Brewing, and he said that um, since this is actually within the 200-foot riverfront area, um, it needs to be a negative two determination with the conditions that we had. Um, so the only thing that we're looking to do is amend uh, the document and um, assuming we agree with um, Mr. Stenson, just switch it from a negative three determination to a negative two determination, which says that it is within the uh, riverfront area, but it won't be involving dredging or altering the riverfront. So, um, since I think this is a relatively straightforward, uh, before I make a motion, does anyone else have any thoughts? This was at RDA, correct? We yes. went into the NOI at this point, right? Okay. Yeah, the NOI okay. is for phase three, which is more substantial work. Right, okay. So if there's no, um, no other thoughts on this, then I would like to make a motion to amend the um, RDA for phase two of, um, work at uh, one community place to a negative two determination from the negative three determination that we made at our last meeting. Ben Byrne, I'll second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, then I will ask to, for a vote. Pete Law. Pete Law, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Okay. That paperwork should be ready tomorrow and um, 
I assume that uh, that uh, Sue Brulot is going to try and let us do this electronic signature stuff, which would make it a lot easier for everyone, I'm sure. And that process, Tim, this speed law, that would be Sue will reach out to us uh, requesting our approval and then she'll. Yeah, she'll send the document signature. set okay. up so that we can do our signatures and um, like we did on that test run. Very good. All right, well, thank you for that. Um, now we have um, 144 North Main Street um, request for certificate of compliance. I, I had this under old business. Um, we discussed this at last meeting, but was I thought we had voted on it, but does anyone have a different recollection? And if not, we could have a discussion about it. I'll just look back at my notes here. That was 144 North. That's the uh, Bloody Brook Farm where they dug up the uh, the underground tanks. Yeah, my notes from the last meeting, Tennessee Fee Law, was that we uh, okayed the certificate of compliance. Yeah. My so um, I will just check with Sue and, and make sure that um, she concurs and then that she can prepare, um, you know, the certificate of compliance on this. Yeah, that is uh, noted in the uh, Conservation Commission minutes from July 22nd. Right. That's okay, fine. good. Now we have a couple of other things um, that came up actually three different things um, that aren't on the agenda. So I'm gonna take them in the order that, uh, that I experienced. And I th think I sent an email to all of the commissioners that um, uh, the building inspector um, notified me that somebody had purchased a house at the corner of North Main Street and um, Route 5 and that they had a small excavator and that they were actually doing excavation and vegetation removal. Um, it's, the, it's the northernmost house on North Main Street and a um, little white house and an area that floods quite regularly. And um, the building inspector noticed that some, you know, debris, et cetera, was in the yard. Um, so I stopped by and talked to the owner recent purchase of the name of Sam Chang, who was a resident of Greenfield, and um, mentioned to him that he had not, uh, um, he'd not come to the commission or the building department to, to do the things he was doing on his property and requested that he go to the building department and put in the necessary requests. Um, I will check in with Sue to see if he's done that. He said he was going to do it this week, um, but any RDA that he would be bringing to us um, or NOI um, because uh, that's basically what he probably need to do. Um, that will be at the earliest our next meeting. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to ask, since this work's already been done, um, you know, what, what the commission should think about doing, if anything, that's other than trying to get compliance from this person. I mean, the- oh, This is Pete Law, Tim, just for the record, can you, uh, and I might've missed it, but can you stipulate what number on North Main Street that was? I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, I don't know if Ben is able to do a Google Maps or, um, well, he's probably be better at this than I am because of his line of work. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, I have the address, the street addresses for the other North Main Street properties that are on this discussion, but that's one I don't, um, I know. Go ahead. I know ben. I re reviewed one. I drove by it the other day. And it looked that like was 182. Okay. Yeah. According to Google maps, it's 236 is at the end of main street and five and 10 there. Okay. 236. Okay, thank you. For the record. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can either 
since he, the owner said he was unaware that he needed to do this, um, you can rely on him to come to the town because he needs to go to the building department. Um, it's possible that he may need to do um, a different septic system, um, but, uh, or we could consider, I guess the other option we have is to consider some sort of enforcement action. Um, I'm, when I, we've done, we had this one experience with an enforcement action before and um, I, uh, Mr. Stinson from the DEP said that, you know, trying to get voluntary compliance is possibly a good way to go on these things. Um, something that's really egregious, uh, I guess, would be a different situation. And it's, it's a little easier to do than an enforcement action. So I just wanted to get your guidance. There's, I think uh, the next one we're gonna talk about is a similar situation where work was done without the proper approvals and um, what we feel we, you know, our goal is to get compliance and what we feel the best course is and the, the, the most direct and uh, beneficial for the all parties. Tim, this is Pete Law. When you met with the owner and discussed it, do you feel that he was in voluntary agreement to uh, cease and desist until he had the necessary requests and paperwork in and further decisions were made? Um, I had a basic a verbal agreement with him that he would limit whatever work he was going to be doing to the inside of the house. Um, and I told him that, uh, you know, if I saw any work or if I was notified that any work was going on outside, particularly in, I told him his whole house was in the riverfront and that uh, any outside work would require him to be um, filing some, some form of paperwork with the, the Conservation Commission. Um, he seemed to be willing to do that. Um, the only thing I would like to follow up on is, has he come into the town as he said he was going to do? Um, and sought advice about what, what paperwork he needs to file. Um, <clears throat> so I can, if, if we wanna, you know, take the leap, the, the least course of action and just let me check with Sue on whether he's done that or not. Um, then uh, if he has actually contacted the building department, then that's a good sign that he's doing what he represented he would do. And I'm fine to let it go forward. But he seemed uh, genuinely uh, to be unaware of what he was doing. Not that lack of knowledge of the law is an excuse, but um, if in fact he does make the effort to, to file the correct paperwork, then, then I feel like that would be the easier course for us. Yeah, Ben Byrne, I would uh, tend to agree. I mean, it depends on his uh, compliance as to willing to get into compliance as uh, will dictate our response as to how hard we have to ratchet it up. All right, well, that, what do you Agreed. think, Pete? Yeah, I agree. We, uh, there's no motion for this one, but I think it makes sense. We uh, you okay. do your check to see if anything's come in. We keep an eye on it, and mm -hmm. like Ben said if we need to do something more, we'll we'll take the next steps. But uh, always the best to have the voluntary agreement and people that want to work mm -hmm. within the guidelines. So that's fine with me. Okay, um, and the similar situation at 182 North Main Street where. I think three or four trees were removed by um, a licensed tree service. Um, and I'm not sure if um, uh, Amy, this Amy Hostowski's iPad is possibly somebody who was involved in that work. Um, I'm just listening in. Um, and, and are you um, are you uh, part of the, the tree service? Is that a family? Um, it's my son's business and he's out working. Okay. So he'd be at the meeting and I said I would listen in. Um, okay, so I, I had, just so I can share with the commissioners, I stopped by and I 
introduced myself to the owners of 182 North Main Street. Um, I believe that they are, let me check my contacts and um, they're Donald and Ginger Stokes. And they've owned the home for a long time. And they said that uh, they uh, were having trouble with tree branches dropping on the top of their roof and causing damage. And uh, they contacted the uh, tree service and they um, performed the work of removing several large trees uh, and then um, chipping the trees. I, and my observation is that uh, the area where where the trees were, I don't think grass ever grew there because it was fairly shaded. But in any case, um, there's a large expanse that you, if you drove by it and saw it, that's definitely, it's just soil at this point. There's no vegetation on it. And then there's a large area in the back where um, probably tree branches were chipped and uh, the larger pieces were taken or moved off the property. But so my concerns were basically worries about erosion into the brook and also, um, you know, what should be done about the, uh, the, the wood chips and the placement of the wood chips. Uh, they're sort of, I don't know if Pete, did you say you drove by and took a quick look? Yeah, I, I as Pete lied, took a quick look from, from the roadside mm -hmm. um, as much as I could see, but, you know, I agree. It's, it's uh, right down the soil there now and I couldn't really see towards the eastern side close to the brook but yeah yeah there's a lot of uh you know as you know tree tree companies do they chip up a lot of the debris and it, it was piled at the back of the property um i didn't uh, i wanted to get your guys thoughts um on this before again we took a the stokeses were very willing to do whatever whatever the commission required they do want to um i think stump grind the three or four large stumps so that they're sort of flat with the soil. Um, and, uh, you know, before, before we did anything on it, I wanted to get, you know, your guys input. Um, Cause obviously they, they were very, uh, again, this, this couple was more than happy to do whatever needs to be done. M my initial thoughts when I was speaking to the one, the, we, the, uh, the debris, um, the, the ground up uh, tree matter might need to be moved somewhere other than where it's currently located. And that um, possibly some revegetation along the brook at the back um, should be allowed to take place, um, but that they should definitely maybe reseed or put to lawn um, the area that's been really disturbed at the front of the property to prevent and do that relatively quickly to prevent, uh, you know, storms from washing the soil down into the brook. So um, I'm not sure how best to achieve that goal um, other than to just come up with a plan and ask them to do it. Um, so I wanted to get input from um, you and Ben. Uh, yeah, this is Pete Law. It sounds like there's a lot of cooperation and volunteer response here too. So I mean, uh, if we can get the required actions done that way, I think we're well ahead of the game. Um, I think um, your kind of areas of concern, and since we don't really have any documents or things to work at, it may be another verbal communication with you, but it, you know, the proper removal of the um, of the chips, um, potential revegetation uh, in that area closer to the brook if needed, and, and then uh, require the you know ask for the reseed to the lawn as soon as possible so that we can uh, you know maintain any of that um, erosion issue. Is there any concern as you look further back into the site that we would want erosion control there now by the brook or just let the process proceed as, um, as the owners can get done? Well, in, in, in a large part, um, where, the, uh, where the wood chips were dumped sort of has uh, two thirds of the area. They are, appear to be acting like an erosion control. They would be like a silk fence almost or or a sock. There is a, a 
further to the, um, if you're looking at the property from the street to the, the extreme left of the, that area that has been opened up, there's, um, it goes right down to the brook area. So that might require like a little, you know, once they remove those, those chips to a, a logical location, maybe they can use them around the house, um, you know, if they're, you know, in their gardens or whatever, their flower beds, um, you know, putting some silt fence down there until the grass comes in. That would be, uh, you know, a reasonable thing for them to do or hay bales. Um, and then to let some of the vegetation grow back in uh, along the brook. Um, but yeah, they are very co op they're, um, they're willing to do whatever we tell them to do. So um, if, if it's logical for me to do this, I mean, uh, I'm happy to go and have another conversation with them and tell them what we want them to do. Uh, or we can ask them to develop a plan and just pers you know, send it to Sue um, saying this is what we've agreed to do. Um, Well, I'll let uh, this speed log and I'll let Ben jump in too, but uh, you know, it's, we're looking, we're look like we have some good voluntary compliance. I think the first step would be go and have the discussion. Um, see, you know, if you think there's anything more to do now, and then if there's agreement, then maybe, um, you know, memorialize it in just a, a, an understanding of what we're going to do. And then we, we monitor and just make sure things, uh, happen on per your agreement there okay uh, any problem with that ben no nope, uh been burnt uh yeah i'd say uh you know make sure any erosion controls if needed would be there you know a little bit of replant here and there put some shrubs or something in there and whatever uh makes sense for replantings i think that would be more than reasonable as long as they're uh, you know willing to do what they need to do that's fine yeah okay all right well good then i will um i will uh speak with the stokes's and um, I just so since since uh, Miss Hal Halstowski, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name Halstowski. Um, I understand that uh, I I think that maybe the commission should uh, consider writing something or getting something to send to the homeowners along North Main Street as a courtesy, just reminding them that they are in the 200 their their houses are in the 200 foot riverfront. Um, and that uh, they should, if they aren't aware, they should be aware that if they want to do um, extensive tree work in their properties, they need to come to the Conservation Commission. Um, but um, one of the things that uh, the DEP mentioned to me is that um, it would be good to have uh, the tree service company um, just confirm that they're aware that if they're doing work like this and they know that there's a, there's a, a riverfront situation that they should advise the homeowner that they need to talk to the town uh, conservation commission before they do work. And I'm sure that um, this was an oversight, um, but it's something that we want to communicate to um, to the tree service company so that we don't have repeats of this on a regular basis. Are you speaking to me? Is that? Yeah, more or less. I would. It would be great if um, if your if your son's company could contact the building department and just make sure that uh, that I, it sounded like they understood that they needed to be concerned about this, but they might not be fully aware of you know um, the need for a homeowner to file before they do this kind of work. And we would have. This is the kind of work that we would have routinely approved. Um, you know, because it made perfect sense. It was a safety issue, et cetera. So it's just a question of protecting the homeowner from, you know, but we could potentially have brought an enforcement action, which is sort of heavy handed and we don't want to do that. We're just trying to get compliance and um, protect the river. So um, would that be something that you could ask your, um, your son to do to contact the building sure. department? Yeah, I will. All right. Um, anyone else have any thoughts about that before we, we say good night to Amy? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye. And um, finally, we have um, 
request from 131 North Main Street. This is um, the house uh, that's fairly close to the school. It's a house that used to have a large uh, number of, I don't know if they were spruce or pine, that was, uh, I think it was the Mr. Marks owned it. Um, yeah, and Pete Log, did just for clarification, what was the number of that? 131 North Main Street. We had an emergency certification with yep. five white pines that were removed previously. Yep. Um, a representative for the owner um, contacted um, the uh, commission again, seeking another emergency certification. Yep. Um, but since this is a continuing process, um, I asked um, I asked Mark Stenson at the Department of Environmental Protection what the what the best way to handle these kinds of things is. Um, it's great that the homeowner is seeking to comply with, um, yeah, I, I think South Deerfield resident, you have your hand up if you wanna speak. I'm just wanting to identify myself as Judith Rathbone, but I'm interested to hear what your communication with Mark Stinson was about. Yeah, um, good evening, Judith. Um, welcome to the meeting. Um, basically, I, I, the only reason I reached out is because um, the emergency, emergency designation is a, is a pretty specific thing. And since the last time we did this for you, um, I have uh, learned more about what that's for. And that's for like an immediate um, consequence of a storm. So like a tree fell, it's got to be uh, removed because it's threatening um, personal injury or something like that, or it's causing, like we had to do an emergency certification recently because of flooding on Route 5 and 10 um, related to all of the storm water that we had that plugged up all of the, the, um, the <clears throat> drain, drains in, in that area and was leading to personal injury accidents on the road. Um, Mark Stenson says if there's no immediate emergency that the proper course is to file a, an RDA saying you need to do work in a wetland resource area. So that's, I, I wanted, before I, before I responded to um, your engineer's request, I wanted to get the advice of the other commissioners um, to see whether, you know, they, they concurred with uh, Mr. Stenson's view that Obviously, we're, we're not going to have a problem with you removing the trees. Um, seems like you've gone to a considerable um, amount of work to get, you know, a, several tree service companies to come and talk to you about what's, what's safe and best for you to do. Um, it's more of a question of uh, normalizing how we handle these kinds of requests. So does that help? Would it? Before you take feedback from the others, may I make a couple of remarks? Sure, absolutely, please feel free. So it had been um, my understanding that the only way to get a tree down at all was to do an emergency certification. That's the way it had been uh, explained to me um, over the uh, around the issue of the um, the first request. So there was I'm, I'm not sure how to how to characterize it um, outside of um, an emergency. The one tree, had fallen and had grazed the house and had destroyed the electric panel. And there was a strong feeling that as soon as one of a cluster comes down, the others are more vulnerable. And there was another one that was leaning and was, um, you know, possibly going to fall. Um, this was all based on not tree service, but on arborist opinion. So mm -hmm. I want to make that distinction because not all tree services have arborists and mm -hmm. the arborists um, seem to be uh, consistent in their opinion 
it just seemed to be, it, I don't know that I need to name names, although I can if you, if, if you really want me to, but um, I, I did consult with five different arborists, although only four came on site. And I, I think that, you know, I don't want to take down any trees. Um, and um, once the sort of layout and um, possibilities were explained to me, the idea that this had been a row that had like most likely been planted, that although I was primarily concerned with trees falling on the house, that I should be expected to have the civic responsibility of being concerned about the trees that were leaning towards the, the wires at, on, the, on the road in front of the house. And um, I, I do think that um, the arborist who then was also the tree service that took it down the first time um, didn't take a complete look at that entire row. And it was, in a way, it was sort of like picking off the most vulnerable. Um, but what, what everyone was saying was that as soon as you take some out, because I have had about three different clusters. And if you take out one of the three, let's say, if I have three different clusters of three, if you take out one of the three uh, that makes the others uh, more vulnerable. So right now, I will say that, um, you know, we did take down under the emergency permission, the one that was um, leaning towards the house and the one that was leaning towards the road and the one that was leaning towards my sheds, which would have destroyed the sheds if it had fell. fell. The other aspect of this was that these were two, I have at least two split trees and split trees are considered um, also a much higher risk um, because their base doesn't support the um, weight of the split. And right now at this point, um, the only one I'm concerned about is the split tree. I'm not withdrawing my request or reducing it but I'm just trying to contextualize it in terms of, from my point of view, it is an emergency. Um, this tree is even taller than the one that fell October 6, 2020, that, that grazed the house and destroyed the electrical panel. This one to me, from my observation, is noticeably uh, leaning more towards the house than it has been previously. This one is a split when the only other split that I took down was behind the sheds, which I, you know, those sheds are so old. There was a part of me like, who cares if the sheds go? But of course, no, that's, you know, that's not the approach to take it. We certainly wouldn't want to destroy the sheds. Um, so really, it's just that that one that I'm most concerned about. And it's the arborists who are saying, no, you can't just single one out you have to consider sort of this whole line. So I'm not sure whether I would agree. I mean, I think theoretically on, on paper and just reading about it, I could see why you would, um, Mark would talk about an RDA, but from my point of view, I was, I was really upset and I have been and worried for the past few months as um, Bucky, the engineer was too busy to put this request in and I just constantly felt concerned and when the hurricane warnings came I was really concerned and the other thing you guys need to know is that because of that tree event um, on October 6 2020 I um, I lost my insurance and my new insurance is almost double what it was before and if I, if, if I have another tree event and the fall, I don't know if you guys have done reading on this, this derecho wind, which is, it's supposed to be going north and then suddenly it turns south. And that was the kind of wind that took down that tree on October 6th of last year. Um, that with a derecho wind, this one could be vulnerable again. So I think there are multiple factors that made me move from this thing of like not really understanding 
why it needed to be deemed an emergency. And maybe that was a misunderstanding. But from my point of view, it, it feels like one when I look at that and I look at the fact that I will I have the potential of a new claim with a new insurance company who will then cancel me and I'll be forced into that state program with a reduction in coverage and and it just goes on and on. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm okay. happy to answer any questions anybody has. All right, um, thanks for that explanation, uh, Ms. Rathbone. Um, so now let's, uh, Pete and Ben, what are your thoughts about this? Um, my, let me just firstly say that Obviously, when I went to the site and gave a certificate uh, previously that the commission subsequently ratified, there was a, a really large tree stump. It was obvious that a tree had fallen and um, <clears throat> it was clear that there was some a dangerous situation. Um, this is a situation where obviously there is a concern um, and it's I was really looking for the commission's guidance on what way we can help this person deal with the, the situation. Obviously an RDA would allow trees to be removed. Um, so the question is, I guess, um, whether the commissioners feel comfortable with, um, with asking uh, Ms. Rathbone to do an RDA or would they be willing to consider um, having me certify an emergency, which um, with the understanding that this would be the last time we would be certifying an emergency unless a real emergency situation existed. Um, so that's my context and I'd like to get your input, Pete and Ben. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, this is Pete Boss. Is this a continuation? of the current emergency notification or is it would be a new one Tim? i i view them as separate incidents um, yeah okay i would agree and burn yeah uh, i would agree as well so you know do you see any other options for from his wrath phone it seems like it's either ask her to file an rda and yes there's a fee and yes there's a hearing or um you know, understanding her concerns um, and recognizing um, that, uh, you know, an emergency certification would allow this work to occur quicker and it would probably avoid, you know, the unlikely occurrence of a storm coming up in the interim while she's waiting for her RDA to be heard and something catastrophic to occur. None of us would want to see that, of course. So, um, you know, I'm willing to do this as, as long as the commission agrees. Um, but then what I would want is for Mr. Sparkle and Ms. Rathbone to decide how many of these trees do they want to remove under this emergency certification and to understand that this will be the last time absent an actual what is probably um, you know, a triggering event like a tree falling um, that we wouldn't be able to do this a third time. So what are your and thoughts? It, uh, are, am I allowed to say? Yes, or? yes, yeah. please. Um, I mean, it's such an interesting question philosophically because, you know, this is a the property with a very uh, big frontage and a semicircular driveway and maybe six um, spruce trees in front. And yet spruce trees are considered unlikely to come down. I've also been told that those spruce trees are dying and that increases their vulnerability. So I have this property with trees basically that there's a lot of vulnerability. And I think it, um, I, I, I guess I, I don't want to, um, it certainly is an emergency from my point of view, mainly because I experienced already it already. And I, I just sort of can't believe that the arborist didn't take a complete look at that entire line. I know you guys see it as 
two separate incidents. But the only reason I see it as one is because it's this entire line of planted pines that are now all bending every which way and starting to uh, uh, tilt. I, I honestly, um, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to separate the one tree that's split from the others, which are only gonna make trouble for the town and not for me personally, if they fall or for anyone driving down Main Street. Um, I, from my point of view, in terms of my life and limb being on the property and my house, the one split tree that I can look out the window and visualize hitting the house is the, um, is the true emergency. The others, it's more of a civic one because like I said, they would go into the road or uh, hit the town wires. And that again, is not based on my personal assessment. That's based on what the arborists said. So you have this sort of common sense level where you look out and you see a tree and you now have seen one come down and you look and you say, well, shoot, that one could too. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I certainly, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm really chagrined that things have turned out this way. I, I blame it entirely on um, the arborist, which is un, a little unfair but there, there was not, there was a sense of hurry, hurry, rush, rush. And there was not a sense of placidly examining uh, everything. And I think that's what contributed uh, to the situation. Um, again, when I had those other trees taken down besides the one that was threatening the house, the others were just um, threatening uh, potentially other people not me. Okay. So that, I hope that clarifies things a little sure. bit. So um, I think we understand the situation. So what we're going to do, Judith, just so you know, is um, now Pete and Ben and I are going to discuss how we'll handle this. And if we do issue an emergency certification, it will be for the whole amount of tree work that your arborist are suggesting needs to be done. Okay. Uh, so, um, but I, I would just wanted to confer with uh, Ben and Pete and see what they want me to do. And um, then we can, depending on their answer, we can start this tomorrow and, um, or we can flip it to Monday to give you a full 30 days where you can get a crew to come. So Pete, what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, well, first of all, this Pete, you know, appreciate all the background and all the, uh, effort you put into this and in, in, in the study by the owner and the, the arborist that you have involved is very helpful. Um, it almost seems like there, there, there's two items here, uh, Tim. There's the, the emergency, there's a split tree and the split tree may be in a cluster of other trees that uh, I agree, there's, there's all the root functions and everything else that there's uh, connections with. Um, so I might suggest, you know, we continue with the emergency uh, determination but spell it out a little bit more, determine how many trees right now, um, which ones are affected by the split tree, which one should be in that cluster. Um, agree upon that with the arborist, and I believe the homeowner said there might have been an engineer involved as kind of the emergency determination. But if there's other ones that are kind of fall outside of that emergency determination, maybe then, depending on what the arborists and, and others advise, um, maybe that comes into a, a second phase that can be addressed by uh, an RDA if needed. But, you know, perhaps everything has to go right now with the emergency. Uh, I would just, I, I don't have all the details in front of me, so I would have to, but I, I do commend the homeowner for having so much information and doing the homework here. So, well, uh, you know, whatever uh, your determination is out there, Tim, after discussing with the, with the arborists and the engineers and so forth, that, that's that's the way to go right now with the emergency to get this initial stuff out of the way so it's done. Mm -hmm. So Ben, do you have any thoughts before I, I'm gonna, before you get to Ben, let me just put, preface this by saying, I understand the thinking and I think that's a good analysis, Pete. Um, I also understand, you know, the, the homeowner's concern is that maybe three or four of these trees will fit into this emergency thing. And then there's two more trees that 
But while she has the work crew there, and these are white pines, they do have a tendency to snap off in storms, et cetera. Yep. Once you remove other white pines, there's less windbreak, so they become more susceptible. Absolutely. It's a lot, it's a lot more cost effective just to remove the trees while there's a crew already there. So Great point. One, one consequence of doing what you're suggesting would be that the homeowner would be in a situation of having to yet again go out and mobilize and get a crew there and have work done, which, which may double the cost of the project. And uh, yeah. so that was just a thought. Uh, so now yeah. let's ask Ben what he thinks. Um, yeah, I would kind of agree. I think we should probably get it all uh, all sorted out and wrapped up into one package instead of just piecemealing and get it all over and done with. And that way we don't have to uh, have to revisit it again unless it's a legitimate emergency down the road. Okay, so if I'm understanding, you know, what my commissioners are saying, they there's they're willing for me to go out and issue an emergency certification, but I'm going to need to specify which trees are going to be removed, and um, I think it's pretty well documented in what your uh, proposal that Bucky Sparkle sent along to the commission was um, in, a, in a proposal from a tree removal company to do this. Um, and if that's the case, we'll just you know, mark these trees and then we'll make a certification for you to do this. Um, and then in future, um, for instance, if, if those, um, uh, I forget which other, they weren't pines. What was the tree species that you mentioned, Judith? The hemlocks? No, they were the spruce. Spruce, yes, yeah, spruce. Right, I mean, Tim, let me just interject to say, I, I, I mentioned the spruces because I'm sitting here thinking about the sort of, we'll give you emergency cert one more <laughs> time and then that's it. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, shoot, would I ever need it again for anything? I have no idea. I am just learning about all of these trees. And I, I have to admit that the combination of arborist and tree service services occurring together has been an interesting perspective and path. And yet you have to understand some of these people charged me just to come out and make a bid. The arborist who you all know, the guy in Amherst, whose name I'm forgetting, I want to say Dave, uh, $500, sorry for this to be public on the public record, but I just couldn't bring myself to have yet, even though there was sort of this detached point of view, maybe, I just, I, I understood the arborist perspective from what all these tree service people were saying who were arborists. And um, uh, I, I just felt like, uh, I don't know, I, I couldn't see pain yet even more money when I had already paid for bids to um, have somebody else. And yes, you are, you, you are absolutely right that people are, they, they, I mean, I don't know actually, would people say independent of if we take this one down, then we must take that one down. Would they say independently, these trees have to come down? I don't, I didn't get the impression that it was just because we're gonna take these other ones down, therefore we have to take this one down. Right. They all were seen as uh, vulnerable. So I, I'm sorry for the lack of clarity on that. Anyway, well, fine. Um, thanks so for I letting me interject. Sure. So I think, um, you know, I think I'm gonna make a motion that uh, the, the commission approve my going out to your property um, to issue a cert, you know, emergency certification to um, take care of the white pines that we're talking about and um, that uh, we'll do this, um, do this emergency certification and then in the future we will respond to what we now know to be actual emergency situations and 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 all other things are going to be treated as requests to work within a resource area so um can i get a second on that yeah as people i would second that motion tim any further discussion hearing none um ben Byrne. aye Pete Law. Pete Law, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. 
Okay, so um, I have a, an appointment in the morning, um, Ms. Rathbone, but I can probably come by the uh, property, you know, or I can arrange a time to do this um, with you and or Bucky Sparkle um, in the afternoon on Friday, or I could do it on Monday, um, or I could do it on Saturday, which... Um, I, are you sure you wouldn't rather do it with Jason Tishka um, Tish, from Northeast Tree yeah, whomever Service? You, whoever you wish me to do it with, I'm I, happy to do I, it. I, th I just think it might make more sense, but I, I have no idea of his availability. Okay. So I, I'd have to coordinate that. And um, I, I would like to do that. And for all I know, um, Bucky might uh, make the time to join or he may be too busy anyway so okay. but I in terms of, of um, uh, the, the, the arborist point of view which I think sure. would be really okay. valuable okay. I, I feel like that would be uh, Jason so okay. I will contact him tonight would you um, would you just ask him to reach out to the um, to the building department Sue Brulot and and give me his contact information and then uh, okay I will and he, I will have Sue have him contact me and we'll set up the appropriate time. Perfect. That sounds great. All right. Um, anything else you need? Thank you so much. Okay. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, well, it's getting late. So um, I uh, want to just quickly bring up this discussion of standardized condition forms. Um, I shared, I think I shared with you guys a rather extensive list I got from the Mass Association of Conservation Commissions. Um, I think, if I recall correctly, Bill was going to um, ask Sue Brula to reach out to some local communities because the list we got from MACC is pretty robust and I'm looking for something that might be like five regular things that we always use and then, you know, a set of, you know, more specialized concerns that at least, um, you know, when we're when we're talking about projects. So, um, I don't think I have anything to. I don't have anything that's worthy of discussion tonight, other than let's continue to work on this process. This Pete Law, I, I reviewed them, um, the ones that we had from uh, MECC, and very extensive. Um, I think there's some covering lots of possible. Scenario. Yeah, there's a few trends in there that we probably want to address, and maybe it is a half a dozen. Uh, we always have this in our pocket in case other things pop up, you know, every once right. in a while there's something strange. But I do agree. I was going to ask if um, we had made any progress looking at, I think the last time we talked was uh, reaching out to Northampton, Greenfield, and Amherst, perhaps. So, yeah. yeah. So if we could have some progress on that before the next one, we can start focusing in a little bit. Yeah. And then it might be a situation where we, to avoid open meeting law, we all get a package from Sue that says, here are the various towns. And then we check off the ones that we think are the most um, logical things that we're going to come across on a regular basis and then make a shorter list that we can use as a basis for most of our activities. Sounds yeah, that's fine with me. It'll make it easier for us to make motions. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I don't think there's any other business. Um, so um, that being the case, I wondered if um, September 23rd is the fourth um, the fourth uh, Thursday of next month. Is that a good meeting date? Well, sure. That should work for me. Okay, okay with you, Ben? Yes, sir. And um, a final thought, um, I guess we're not gonna be having to do anything about the uh, Mill Village Road, Route 5, because um, Lascotti Development has withdrawn their plan to develop the site. So um, it's one thing we won't have to be dealing with this fall. Um, so uh, anybody have anything else that they want to discuss? or Otherwise, I'll entertain a mo motion to adjourn. Second that motion for adjournment at 8.34 p.m. All in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Bill, aye. Ben Burnay. All right. Thanks, commissioners. Have a great night. I'm turning off the recording now. <laughs>